After a greyhound has finished racing, the next step is for them to become a family pet. I'm here in Bondi with Becky and she's just finished her professional career. Now she's going to a rehoming program to learn how to be a family pet. Greyhounds are really well positioned to make a family pet. They're like big lap dogs and all they want to do is cuddle. I love her. She's a darling thing and I'm mad about her. Dad lives in a retirement village and can't have animals and always grew up with animals so he's in love with my dogs and comes over three or four days a week and takes them for a walk. I've had Jack for uh, four years now. Always stays near you, he doesn't you know, climb on the furniture. They're low maintenance pets as well, so they have a short coat, um, they don't smell much, they don't shed a great deal, um, and they just really adapt well to pet life. He was already house trained, so he didn't have any house training to do, and um, he was used to being left alone, so there wasn't that sort of separation anxiety, so from day one, he was just sort of fit straight into the family. Well, originally in England, only the nobility were allowed to own a greyhound because they were such exceptional animals and so useful as, as family dogs. So they have a, a very rich history and um, we've always, as humans, we've always known that they're very special animals. When she sees a, 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 a greyhound, it's as if it's um, a former wallaby recognising another form of wallaby, you know, they, she reacts totally differently. If there was a breed that I had to pick, that would be a breed that I would say, look, that's the best breed for you to teach the child how to train the dog, it would be a greyhound because they're just so compliant, even with someone who's very inexperienced. And you always know that you're going to have a happy welcome when you get home. I really got onto the greyhounds when I sort of started investigating a dog that would suit the lifestyle I have where I live by myself and I'm at work during the day so I needed a confident dog but also I wanted a dog that wanted to have cuddles and get up on the lounge and you know have that sweet personality. By and large very calm, placid dogs, very gentle, great with children, um, they're very tolerant dogs so um, they get along really well in that household environment, um, you know many of them socialise really beautifully with other household pets. Um, and they just uh, adapt really well. They slot into pet lifestyle uh, very easily. There's a huge misconception about greyhounds. Everyone thinks that they need all this exercise and need to run around all the time. In fact, they're pretty much couch potatoes. They're very lazy, they need a little bit of exercise and the rest of the time they lounge around. Everybody that sees me is like, oh, they must need a lot of exercise. And I'm like, no, we get to the 25 minute mark and I'm like, come on guys, we're nearly home, you can make it. So they're, they're not high exercise. One of the remarkable things about greyhounds is the way they conserve energy. They're very good at just being couch potatoes. Greyhounds need as much exercise as any other dog, so 30 to 40 minutes a day will be plenty. You couldn't meet a dog that just is happier to light your feet and just have pats and cuddles. and They sleep for hours at a time. Greyhounds are very healthy dogs. They've been bred to race and they've got very stoic bodies. They're actually much more resilient than a lot of the dog breeds out there. So they're very healthy dogs and in that sense they're, they're cheap to keep. They're inexpensive from a veterinary perspective. In large breed dogs, we often see hip problems, but in greyhounds, we don't really see it at all. So they're very hardy dogs. Greyhounds are the only large breed of dog to be spared the curse of hip dysplasia. And that's because we bred them for performance. As a vet, I've worked with so many greyhounds over the years, and they are actually really gentle animals. In fact, they are probably some of the most gentle patients I've ever treated. He always just likes being around us. If I'm working down at the back of the house, he'll lie on his bed down at the back, and then if we're on the sofa watching TV in the evening, he'll come down to the front and want to be with us there. She's the best behaved dog in the park. I just saw so gentle and relaxed, they're just a joy to have around. I've been studying animal behaviour and animal welfare here at the University of Sydney Vet Faculty for the last 18 years. And I'm particularly interested in the way in which different breeds behave differently. Unfortunately, there's a stigma around greyhounds that they're angry and aggressive, difficult to deal with dogs. 
when in fact they're really just like any other family dog and all they want is to be loved. They don't bark, hallelujah. They don't shed, hallelujah. <laughs> um, they don't smell, they're not doggy. You can have them in a house without it smelling like a kennel. And they're just um, sweet dogs. Very, very good disposition. I don't think I've ever heard him bark, or maybe a couple of times when he's been playing, but no, he doesn't bark. And they're not aggressive with other dogs in parks. And for an urban dweller, that's critically important. Greyhounds are actually, according to our data, very cautious dogs, so they're not going to pile in and have a scrap. In fact, they're considered, you know, one of the least aggressive breeds as far as aggression towards humans goes. If they were a jumpy dog, they'd be quite off-putting to people, but because they just run up to people and just want to lean against them and have a pat, yeah, people are won over by that beautiful, sweet temperament. He's, he's actually a really good urban dog. These are probably the most two pleasant dogs we've ever had. What we discovered really is that there's certain parts of the, of the sight hounds that make them very good at chasing. And that's what we bred them to do. We bred them to run and really enjoy running. Um, there would be no reason that we would have any um, concern at all about a greyhound going into a family with kids. In fact, it would be a dog that I would recommend for that. In order for a greyhound to become a pet, they go through quite a rigorous testing program so they can become the perfect family pet. Uh, currently all racing greyhounds need to be muzzled in public and that continues on into pet life. However, the law was changed in New South Wales in 2011 so that greyhounds that go through the Greenhounds program can be issued with a muzzling exemption and a green collar to signify that they're able to be muzzle free in public. Greyhounds are temperament assessed, microchipped, vaccinated, de-sexed and vet checked. The program is, is very straightforward. It's really just making sure that a dog that's lived a racing life is comfortable as a pet and, and understands what being a normal dog is. You know, the, the assessment program to choose the ones that are going to be most suitable as pets I think is, um, is really strong and you end up with, with dogs like Jack that are, are just fantastic as pets. Racing greyhounds are trained to chase things from when they're very small puppies. So it's quite incredible how many of these greyhounds pass the greenhound program. It goes to show that all they want to do is become a family pet. It's not surprising that with their gentle and placid nature that well over 90% of greyhounds going through the green collar assessment pass that test. If I was to put another dog um, of any other breed through that test, it would be quite common, I would believe, that a lot of them would, would fail it um, and most greyhounds would pass it. I know quite a lot of dogs that just would fail miserably. So I'm back down here in Bondi with Becky and she's earned her green collar and this weekend she gets to go home to her new family. Each greyhound has got a different personality so they're matched according to your lifestyle. Whether you're an older family, you've got kids, you've got other pets, they'll find the perfect greyhound for you. So they get to know the dog, they get to know what type of family it would suit or what type of situation it would suit in order to find it a long-term home. Some greyhound adoption programs have a trial period where the greyhound is allowed to settle into your family to see if you're perfect for them and they're perfect for you. A younger family, for example, might want a dog that's a little bit more active and can be really involved in family activities. They might want a dog that is happy to play with the kids when they kick a ball around in the backyard, but then relax and be really tolerant of the kids when they want extra cuddles from the dog. Unlike getting a puppy, once a greyhound comes to you from a rehoming program, they're essentially socialised and toilet trained, making the transition very smooth. I, I, I did think a lot about what I, whether I wanted a puppy or not before I made the decision for these guys. And as much as puppies are cute and lovely, when you work, you know, that isn't something that's good for the pup or good for yourself when they're going to be home by themselves for long periods. So I felt the best thing for the dog was that they came as an older dog. She was toilet trained. She's really never had any accident. She's been amazingly good. As loving, lazy dogs, greyhounds are perfectly suited to older families, people with young kids and those who live in small homes or apartments. The stature and physique of a greyhound is something that we as vets always marvel at because it's, a, it's built for racing. We're really fortunate that it's also built for health and happens to be a wonderful companion. So the appearance may look sleek and possibly less rounded and fluffy than your average lap dog, but the true dog lovers see an extremely healthy and um, beautiful animal. 
Beware of the Greyhound. She's big-hearted, shows fierce loyalty and won't growl at apartment living. <laughs>